November 22nd, 1963. In a sweltering Air Force One on a Dallas runway, Lyndon Johnson takes the oath as 36th President of the United States. At his side, numb with shock, stands Jackie Kennedy in her wool suit, the fabric stained with the blood of her murdered husband. She had refused to change her clothes for the photo. That pink suit would become an unforgettable symbol of the nation's tragedy. The story of that suit and of Jackie Kennedy's pioneering sense of fashion is a tale of beauty, elegance, and grim reality. Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy. She was the closest to a princess this country has ever had. And from the start of her reign, Jackie was a national fashion plate. During the 1960 presidential campaign, Women's Wear Daily predicted that if Jack Kennedy won, Mrs. Kennedy would be the most photogenic and chic occupant of the White House since Dolly Madison. That is, since 1817. And she was. At 31, Jackie was the youngest first lady of the 20th century. She was rumored to spend thousands of Kennedy dollars on clothes every year, many of which were made in France. Un-American, cried the president's advisors. In 1960, they ordered her to buy domestic. She specifically appointed an American designer, Oleg Cassini, to get people to stop saying that. So there she was wearing these American clothes designed by Oleg Cassini that did have a French influence. Cassini would make Jackie more than 300 outfits during her two and a half years in the White House. In her well-fitting Franco-American duds, Jackie gleamed, and Jackie glistened, and the flash bulbs popped. For inauguration night, she wore a Bergdorf Goodman full-length embroidered silk sheath. That luxurious piece of fabric launched a presidency of true glamour. School children may aspire to be president, but during the Kennedy years, women the world over wanted to be Jackie. And then, in one awful day, one Jackie Kennedy outfit became indelibly stamped in the public mind. The suit was pink boucle wool, almost a shocking pink, with blue trim and a blue silk liner. But this suit was not one of the hundreds of Cassini creations Jackie often wore. It was actually a knockoff of the classic French designer Chanel, a copy made at Chez Ninon in New York City. It featured the three-quarter length sleeves Jackie liked so much, as well as a boxy jacket and a modest below-the-knee skirt. On her head, Jackie wore her ultimate fashion trademark, a pillbox hat. I mean, so snappy. It was a vibrant, almost sort of shocking kind of suit for her to be wearing. On November 22nd, 1963, it was impossible not to notice Jackie. Even her husband joked that morning that the First Lady got more attention than the President. Nobody wonders what Lyndon and I wear. <laughs> she had chosen the wool suit because the weather was expected to be cool in Dallas. But it wasn't. At half past 12 on November 22nd, Dallas was enjoying an unseasonably warm day as the crowds welcomed the presidential couple. And then, the unthinkable. The First Lady's arms and legs were smeared with her husband's blood. Brain tissue spattered her face and hat. Her trademark white gloves were drenched in crimson. Jackie accompanied her dying husband to Parkland Hospital, where, half an hour later, doctors officially pronounced the president dead. Jackie let herself be guided back to the airport and onto the presidential plane. Her clothes remained unchanged. On Air Force One, Lyndon Johnson, now the president-designate, was waiting for a federal judge to swear him in. In Jackie's cabin, an attendant had laid out a fresh white outfit, but she refused to put it on. Let them see what they've done, she insisted. 
When the plane touched down in Washington and the president's coffin was removed, Jackie continued to wear the grim outfit. She did not return to the White House until shortly before 5 a.m. on November 23rd. Only then, 15 hours after the fatal shots were fired, did she remove the pink suit. The First Lady's maid, Providencia Paredes, folded the suit and put it in a box. A few days later, Paredes passed the dress on to Jackie's mother, Janet Auchincloss. Auchincloss wrote November 22, 1963 on the top of the box and stashed it in her attic beside Jackie's ivory silk taffeta wedding dress. Jackie would never touch the suit again. Jackie Kennedy's pink wool suit was given to the National Archives where it remains today, out of public view.